Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you realize how fucking garbage this content is and then it's very much too late to do so. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute Sasquatch. In either case though, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. For today's video, we are taking a look at True King Dinosaurs. A go second, obliterate the opponent style deck. But most importantly of all, we are doing this deck profile on a budget. Now, we'll be discussing in the video towards the end some of the options you could take if you have access to them that are certainly not budget friendly, but otherwise this is going to be a very cheap deck to run. At least, relatively speaking. Now, the True King Dino variant has fallen a bit to the wayside, especially with Diagram being at 1, so it does make it a little bit more difficult to get consistency going, but being able to pop babies with Litho is absolutely insane, allows you to go off and you can definitely just fucking rush your opponent down and win very quickly. So if that's the sort of playstyle you're into and you just want to play dinos and just be fucking ignorant of your opponent, then this might be the kind of deck for you. Now, if you're watching today's video and you're feeling inspired to go out and pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There'll be a link down in the description to their eBay store. And if you go ahead and use that link, courtesy of yours truly, you're going to get yourself a nice cheeky discount. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so let's get stuck into the deck profile for you. So let me first apologize before we go ahead. If you do hear any weird noises in the background, particularly if there's a whirring sound, that's probably my fans going absolutely fucking mental on my laptop like they always do. Hopefully, though, we can edit that out and you won't hear it. And also, it's blowing absolute gale force winds outside, so there's a possibility you hear some spooky woo sounds in the background. I promise you, my microphone isn't haunted. But anyway, enough waffling on for me, let's get stuck in. So we've got two copies of Agnimizud. Uh, this is the one that, of course, is going to be easiest for you to get out for the most part. Although really, this is basically here just as an engine requirement for Litho. Uh, just make it a bit easier to get into, if I'm quite honest with you. Uh, Litho, of course, is the most important one here. This is going to rip your opponent's extra deck apart. And in a format where so many people are running combo decks, this can be absolutely brutal if executed. And that makes up our True King package, of course, with Diagram later on down the line. These are really the only ones you want to run. You can run Barastos if you want to, if you've got access to other cards. But really, Barastos just doesn't work well enough for me. I think that this works perfectly fine. I've tried cutting this down to one before, but it's not strong enough. And you do really want to see it um, relatively quickly to allow you to go through your lines of play. We're then running a couple of cards using here. Dugaran is a dinosaur, and it's also a fire, so there's some benefits of that. We have Kamongus here, which is an earth, of course, which has its benefits, and is able to just go over your opponent's stuff. It's also relatively small compared to some of the other kaijus, so it's a nice touch. If you've got the space and you really want to run it, you can also run Gamma Seal in here, but I don't feel like it really fits enough for me, at least not in testing. Running a single copy of Coatlas, given that this is a budget variant in the deck and we're not running Arcasaur, but again, we'll touch on that a little bit later. This is another way for you to get into pill, but if you do need to go first, this can give you a negate on board. Running double copies of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, I think two is perfectly plenty. You really don't want to open this, you want to get it off pill as much as possible. And so really two is more than enough, three just gets very bricky. Of course, though, this is still one of the best boss monsters in the game, so you definitely need to have it in your deck. Now, of course, this is a going second variant because that's what dinos do best. So running Pancratops in here, nice and easy to get off your Petit Tyranodon if you want to. It's nice and easy to get into your hand. If you do open it, it's a free body on board. Uh, it's just a fantastic card. There's a reason it's at one. It, it, it's just insane. Really, really good. And of course, it's even more powerful than usual in dino decks. We're then running triple copies of Soul Eating Over after the bread and butter of this deck. If you don't have this, the deck basically is unplayable. So triple copies of Over after pretty much mandatory. It does absolutely everything you need in this deck. We then run a triple copies of Miscellaneousaurus, one of the best, I guess, hand traps you'd call it in the game, particularly in this deck, it's absolutely insane. It's just a blanket protection for everything. It banishes from grave to get stuff out for free. It's just absolutely wild. It does so much, and of course it's fire as well, so that comes up with your true kings. Speaking of true kings, we've got a bunch of cards here that we can hit to get our litho. We've got giant rex, which of course can be banished off your pill, or of course can be banished in the summoning of your ultimate conductor, which can just give you additional bodies on board. We've then got triple copies of Baby Ceratosaurus. I think triple copies is way more mandatory in this particular build because you want to see it in your hand so you can get it 
off your uh, litho, or of course you can pop it off diagram, which is just wonderful, and much the same for Petit Pteranodon, although I think one copy is perfectly sufficient in here. We're on a single copy of Jurak Aeolo, of course we can get this off our Miscellaneousaurus, which is a nice touch. We can also pop it with a True King, which is a nice touch as well. It can help us get into Chambari, it can help us get into Trish, just a really good option, particularly in a budget-friendly variant. Then onto our hand traps here, triple copies of Cyframe Gamma, Drive with the mandatory brick that comes along with it, and triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. Hand traps aren't quite as powerful, not particularly against the top tier decks, because they can usually play through them quite well, but against anything that's below those top tier decks, these absolutely crush them, and they're certainly the best options if your opponent is in a pinch and they don't see an ideal hand, these are going to be your best options to deal with it. At the moment, I believe that these are more or less mandatory in most decks to be able to play in this format. We then got triple copies of Fossil Dig. It's wild that this card is still at three, but whilst it is, we're definitely going to take advantage of it. Now onto our field spell package. We've got a single copy of Diagram because it's a one. Again, this makes the deck entirely playable. Without this, it really isn't worth running. On a single copy of Mystic Mine here, the fact that we play 44 cards can be absolutely enough. Sometimes your opponent will set up their board and you can just slap this down and you win on the spot. If they don't have back row removal, they don't have an out to deal with this, this can actually just be an instant win button. Honestly, I like free game ones and this just gets you there. And then we're running triple copies of Lost World. This can be an out to your opponent's Mystic Mine, which is always, of course, a nice touch. But also it's just an incredibly powerful card as we all already know. And I think that three copies in here is mandatory as well. Run a single copy of Terraforming because we run field spells, a single copy of Call by the Grave to deal with hand traps, another interrupts from your opponent's grave, it's good going first or second, it's fantastic. A single copy of Foolish Burial can set up an awful lot of your lines of play, you can omit this if you want to, but I really like it in here. We're then running double copies of Double Evo Pill, I think two is plenty in here, there's no reason to go for a third. And then triple copies of Dark Rule and no more. Even if we can't kill our opponent in one turn with this card, we can absolutely obliterate their board so that they can't actually recover. And this also deals with mad fucking crazy uh, combo decks, which of course is going to be our main enemy to this style of play. We then move on to our extra deck here. So we have Sacred Tree Beast, Hypertron, or whatever he's called. Um, to be honest with you, with VFD being missing, this gives you another line of play so that you can set up a negate if you need to go first. It's a really cool card. Of course, it's no VFD levels are strong, but it is strong enough. Dolka and Lagia are pretty much mandatory here in my opinion, one of each card here. A single copy of Ragnar Zero, uh, this in conjunction with your Lost World is going to get you free draws and you know, we, we like that, that's a good touch. A single copy of Abyss Dweller, arguably the strongest rank 4 in the game, mandatory to play. Baguska, again if you go first and you can just get to rank 4, this can usually get you over the line. Enough to at least buy a few turns so you can see the cards you need to just kill off your opponent, particularly in turn 3. So we're going to get a dragon in here just for generic back row removal. So this is a really good option to have available to you. IP Masquerainer in here to go into any of our interrupts, which we'll get to in a moment. Pentastag in here for Ultima Conductor Tyranno because it's absolutely fucking hilarious. Not only can you get the option of, of course, doing a thousand damage, but instead you can just be an absolute dick and deal piercing with every single attack. We then have Cerberus, Phoenix, and Unicorn. These are, of course, are for our IP Mascarena and just good generic utility as well. That, of course, most beneficial when you can get them off Mascarena, but just generically good cards to have available to you. We then have a single copy of Chambara. If you wanted to run other options, you could consider the likes of Boral Sword or Access Code if you have access to them. But again, consider we're doing this on a budget and this gives us another option to play. Uh, Chambara is nice and easy to summon out here and can be a win button in this deck. We then run an Omega because we run the package, so why the hell not? And we're running Trishula because ripping apart your opponent's board, their hand and all of the other stuff along with it is absolutely insane. It also happens to be a level 9, so we can set it up in turn. We can rip a card out of our opponent's hand and of course lay over into a rank 9 if we have the ability to do so. Then just as a note whilst we're here, this side deck of course isn't an actual side deck. This is cards that you could consider running. Arca, sorry, you have access to it, absolutely mandatory in pretty much any dino deck that you can get this into um it's just absolutely insane of course if you don't have access to it you can play without it but really if you have access to it you definitely need to play it a single copy of halka fibrax of course we have tuners in here so you can kind of benefit off this from a little bit of link climb and it's not as mandatory but it is an option you can consider a single copy of pot of extravagance largely this deck is not really concerned about our extra deck too much, so this can be a really good option. Much the same for Prosperity, although Prosperity isn't quite as strong in this deck, at least from my opinion. Extravagance is the better option. You can also consider the likes of Pot Desires if you want to have some draw deep power on a bit of a budget. Desires, of course, are still a fantastic card in the modern game and one that you could definitely consider running. Lightning Storm is an option you can consider as well, but of course not budget friendly even in the slightest, but it is a fantastic option for going second. 
Harpy's Feather Duster kind of fills the same sort of void, wiping out the opponent's back row, particularly in a back row heavy format, definitely something to consider. Triple copies of Infinite Impermanence, good going first or second, much the same with Droplets. These are both fantastic cards, but neither are particularly budget friendly. Certainly not the case with Forbidden Droplet, but both of these are great options you could consider using in this deck. And that, comrades, is all for today's video. Thank you very much for making it this far. By virtue of the fact that you have, hopefully you have enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe and the notification bell if you haven't already, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either case, though, thank you very much for coming along. You are one of the rarities that has made it to this part of the video. Now, it is worth noting since you're here that this isn't the only kind of content that we do. Just given how things are in the world at the moment, and I can't mention why without getting demonetized, I'm sure you all know exactly what I'm hinting at, we are a bit tight on what options we have. However, normal service should start to resume in the coming weeks, and once it does, we'll have locals vlogs back on for you, we'll have face-to-face -face deck profiles, which I much prefer over these. It's much better speaking to some of the tuggers and some of the guys out there and getting their thoughts on their own decks, many of which I've not got the experience to really give you a good interpretation of. On top of that, we do how to play videos, we do combo tutorials and all of the other good stuff, as well as a sprinkling of Yu-Gi-Oh! commentary in between. Now, if you are watching this and it is something you would like to see on the channel, maybe you'd want a deck profile covered, maybe you want to learn how to play a deck, you reach out and let me know. All of my links to my social media are in the description. If you go ahead and check those out, I will take a look at what you have to say. You can also leave YouTube comments, I do take the time to read as many of them as I possibly can. But anyway, that's enough waffling on for me. Thank you very much for making it this far into the video, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.